Okay. Derek, thank you. Great. Uh, thanks, uh, uh, David. And ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, so I'm working at, as a cardiologist at the Heart Hospital in London, and I've been uh, asked to uh, talk about the ERICA trial, and it's great to see so many of the PIs here today uh, who are helping us uh, recruit to this study. So I'm going to give you a little of the background of the study and give you a trial update. So the ERICA trial is looking at the effect of remote ischemic preconditioning on clinical outcomes in patients undergoing coronary artery bypass graft surgery. It's a multi-center, double-blind, randomized controlled trial called the ERICA trial. And we're working very closely with our clinical trials unit at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine uh, to undertake this study. So just some background first. Clearly, we all appreciate that higher-risk patients are undergoing CABG plus or minus valve surgery, and therefore novel cardioprotective strategies are required to improve clinical outcomes in this patient group. And we're looking at a phenomenon called remote ischemic conditioning, which has been reported in proof-of-concept studies to be cardioprotective. But whether it can actually improve clinical outcomes is unknown and is the subject, is the hypothesis of the ERICA study. So the ERICA study is investigating whether remote ischemic conditioning can actually improve clinical outcomes at one year in patients undergoing CABG plus or minus valve surgery. We're lucky to be sponsored by an NIHR EME grant of 1.5 million, which is a four-year uh, study, which we be began recruiting in May 2011. So first of all, what is remote ischemic conditioning? This is a phenomenon in which if one applies non-lethal brief episodes of ischemia and reperfusion to an organ or tissue away from the heart, in this case, if we apply some non-lethal ischemia and reperfusion to the forearm prior to a pro-injurious insult to the heart, in this case, the CABG surgery, one can actually reduce the injury sustained by the heart in terms of perioperative myocardial injury. The mechanism through which this works is unknown, but it is believed that a humoral factor produced in the arm in response to the ischemia reperfusion injury is carried to the heart where it activates pro-survival protective pathways that protect it against the cabbage surgery. This can also be undertaken by uh, subjecting the kidney to short episodes of ischemia reperfusion to protect the heart too. It is believed that a humoral factor is involved, but it also has been discovered that a neural pathway is also critical for this phenomenon. So in reality, we don't know the actual mechanism for this works, except that by applying ischemia reperfusion to an organ or tissue away from the heart, one is able to protect it. This is the first, uh, one of the first proof of concept studies which we published uh, in the last, in 2007, which we undertook at the Heart Hospital in a small proof of concept study in which 57 patients undergoing CABG plus or minus valve surgery were randomized to receive either remote ischemic conditioning or control. And in this particular study, a blood pressure cuff was placed on the arm after the patient had been anesthetized and inflated to 200 milliliters, milliliters of mercury and left inflated for five minutes. And then the cuff was deflated for five minutes. And this cycle was repeated three times. In the control group, an uh, uninflated cuff was left on the arm for 30 minutes. In this particular study, the primary endpoint was perioperative myocardial injury as measured by troponin T release over 72 hours. And here we can see that in those patients that were randomized to receive the remote ischemic conditioning protocol, this is the purple curve showing the area under the curve, troponin T, you can see that there's a reduction in the AUC of about 42%. So there's a reduction in the amount of myocardial injury sustained during surgery in this small proof of concept study. But what is the clinical significance of this? And this is what the ERICA study is testing. So the ERICA trial is now a 30 center study recruiting 1,610 patients. And the eligibility criteria are CABG plus or minus valve with Euroscore five or above and all having on pump blood cardioplegia. So we've deliberately chosen the higher risk group because we believe these are the patients which are most likely to benefit from an additional cardioprotective strategy. The patients are randomized to receive RIC or a sham RIC or four or five minute cuff inflations after the patients have been anesthetized and prior to surgery taking place. The primary outcome at one year is a combined primary endpoint of death, myocardial infarction, revascularization and stroke. And then we were looking at a number of secondary outcomes, including perioperative myocardial injury, renal injury, ITU, hospital stay, inotrope score, 
some uh, quality of life and six-minute walk tests, and we'll also be doing an echo sub-study. So where are we so far? These show a list of the sites which are recruiting, which have been recruiting since May 2011. And as you can appreciate, as the studies come on uh, to recruitment, they come on uh, in terms of their numbers of patients. And you can see the leading sites recruiting at the moment are the Heart Hospital, King's College, Papworth, Brompton, Hammersmith, and uh, some of the later sites have come on later, so clearly they're going to have less patients. But importantly, we've gone over the halfway mark, and we've recruited 867 patients so far. So we're over halfway, and the plan is to continue recruitment and to end recruitment at the end of this year, so December 2013. This shows our predicted uh, recruitment rates, and this is, as you know, if the, anyone is doing clinical studies, recruitment rates, we're always optimistic about how well we're going to recruit, and this was our original target for recruitment, which was supposed to end in May 2013, but as sites come on board and you've got the problems with R&D approval and getting the sites on board and actually starting recruitment, we've revised our predicted end of recruitment now to December 2013, and this is the blue curve here, and you can see we're nicely, hopefully, following along this blue curve. So we hope to be finished recruitment by the end of December. So recruitment started originally in May 2011. Our original recruitment end date was December 2012, but this has now been extended. Uh, sorry, original recruitment end date was May 2013, sorry. Now this has been extended to December 2013. And because we have a one-year follow-up, so our one-year end of year follow-up with December 2014. So hopefully, in March 2015, we'll have the results showing whether remote ischemic conditioning can improve clinical outcomes. Now, the most important thing is that remote ischemic conditioning is a non-pharmacological, non-invasive, virtually cost-free strategy for actually improving outcomes in our high-risk patients. So if we can show an improvement in outcome, then this could change uh, clinical practice. So first, it just leaves me to thank all the patients and staff involved at the recruiting sites, and it's great to personally thank the PIs who are here present today for their commitment uh, and recruitment to this study. Obviously, I'd like to thank the London School Hygiene Tropical Medicine Clinical Trials Unit, and importantly, our funders, the NIHR, the MRC, and the British Heart Foundation. And finally, thank you for your attention. Any questions? I've got a question. There, there are a few randomized trials similar to the trial that you have done which have shown no benefit. And I mean, I think, I think it's a fantastic trial. It's um, absolutely no bones about it. But how do you interpret these trials as, as they are published whilst you're conducting Erica? What, how do you interpret them? So are you referring to trials with remote ischemic conditioning yeah. or other interventions? No, remote ischemic yeah. condition. Yeah. So since we published our study in the Lancet, there's been uh, several studies, the majority of which show a positive effect, but there are some which show a negative effect. And we believe this relates to the intervention. And uh, our original study, we used three cycles of four, uh, five minutes. And we've now, we increased this for this particular ERICA study because we believe that the stimulus of three cycles is probably not sufficient. And plus you have the... Uh, uh, the, the question of concomitant medication. So as you all know, some uh, volatile anesthetics such as isoflurane have been shown to be kind of protective in cabbage settings. So it's important that our stimulus that we give can overcome uh, concomitant medication. There's also medications such as GTN, which is given during surgery, morphine, and we've been very careful to not uh, dictate to the anesthetists or the cardiac surgeons uh, as to the medication they use. So we're hoping that a stronger stimulus in a very large powered study, uh, should be able to tell us either way whether remote ischemic, conditioning, remote ischemic conditioning works or not. Can I have one more question? Do you think nitric oxide or hydrogen sulfide are involved in the immediate effects of ischemic preconditioning? Yes, as you know, hydrogen sulfide and nitric oxide are both mediators of protection, but I don't think they're the actual signal that is carried <coughs> from the arm to the uh, to the heart. I think they could actually mediate the, the, the generation of a signal in the arm, yeah. or they can mediate the signal at the heart. But I don't think they're stable enough to actually carry the signal from the arm to the heart. For that, I think we need a peptide. Oh, yeah? Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you.